mute your microphone and shut off your camera. It helps save bandwidth um, so everything will work a little smoother. If you have questions, though, feel free at any point to unmute um, or to put your face on the screen and ask a question. Um, I see 10 of you have joined on. We have about 17 so far on the chat. So um, for those of you who just joined us, um, go ahead and grab the link that I'm going to put again in the chat box. And what's going to happen is um, I'm going to ask you guys to open up a second window or open that up on a separate device on your phone or whatever, um, because I really want this to be interactive. I want to hear from all of you. I'm seeing where you're all from. Um, up on my screen. Um, I know we have some people from Greece. Uh, we have people from Pakistan, New Jersey, Wyoming, from all over. So this is really exciting. This is this is this is what um, home learning or home um, you know experiences, remote learning is really all about. So I'm really excited to get started with all of you. Um, if you're new to Nearpod, just to kind of mention um, what what's going to happen is I'll show show you in a couple slides how to save all the notes so that you have access to all the information. So I'm going to be controlling your screen a little bit, which is why I kind of like it. So that way you're on the same page I am as we're going through the different resources. I also will be um, sharing from my phone a little bit of uh, the 3D Bear app. And if you have questions, you can drop them in the chat. I'm going to have some stop um, points throughout this presentation for you to ask questions or to give some information that you might have. Um, as we kind of go through this workshop. So I'm not maximizing my screen. Well, I guess I can for a little while. So I won't be able to see the chat, but if you have questions, Mitch is watching that for me. Um, but again, if you can log in, either click uh, or go to join.nearpod.com and put in the code you see on your screen. The code will live up at the top. So if you get kicked out for some reason, because you have a lot going on on your screen, go ahead and, um, and click back into that link. Um, the link is also in the chat, so uh, you have the information. So again, welcome. I'm really excited how broad this is for um, for all of you. Um, and I love that Fable Vision is here. I actually have um, a slide I think you're going to like coming up from Fable Vision. <laughs> so I got some information I think you'll like too. Um, so we're going to be talking about teaching social emotional learning with digital storytelling and augmented reality three big topics all kind of mashed together. So I have a lot of um, ideas that I want to share with you, some experience that I've had with these different areas, um, but I also want to get feedback from you. But I fi figured before we jump into the 3D Bear um, platform and some ideas on how we can help with SEL and 3D Bear, we need to kind of go through each of those terminologies, make sure we're all on the same page with them. So we're going to start with, well, let me introduce myself, and then I'll show you the notes, and then we'll get started with those three terms. Um, I, like I said, I'm Lori Guion. I am the assistant coordinator for model schools at Warren, Saratoga, Washington, Hamilton, and Essex BOCES. That's located in Saratoga, New York. Um, it's, it's upstate of the city, for those of you who are not familiar with the rest of the state of New York. I'm, I'm about three hours from New York City. Um, so. It's very rural, rural where we are, um, but we have some great access to technology by us. So I'm going to share some of the things that we've done with uh, 3D Bear in our region. Um, I am a little bit of a badge collector, um, but I haven't earned the 3D Bear one yet, Mitch. So I would love to have that on there. I am an ambassador, though, <laughs> to be able to add to my collection. Um, so we're going to keep moving on, and I'm going to show you how you can save all of the information that you see on your screen on your screen, not on mine, you're going to see a little arrow, a little circle with an arrow on it in the top right hand corner of your screen. Because you're seeing teacher view on your screen from me, but on your view, you're seeing the student screen. If you click that down arrow, you're going to get a pop-up that says, where would you like to save your notes? And you can choose to send it to email, you can send it to your Google Drive or your OneDrive. You choose where you want it to go, and as long as you take a note, you're gonna see a pop-up come up on, their, on your screen on the right-hand side, or if you're on an iPad, it'll come up on the bottom. And um, you can take those notes, and then it will give you a copy of this as a PDF. So you'll have every link, every activity, everything, every slide that you see, you'll have a copy of after the fact to use as you see fit. All right, so here's your first poll question here. You have one minute to answer it. Tell me what your favorite digital storytelling activity is. So we're going to start with digital storytelling, go into augmented reality, and then we'll start with um, social emotional learning before we get into the platform. But what you're going to do on your end, and I'm going to hide your name so we don't know who picked what, um, but on your screen, tell me some of your favorite digital storytelling activities. And I listed a few for you. You can choose more than one. And then um, you're going to see on my screen that it's starting to fill in as you're answering. So art seems to be a popular one. Mm 
little bit of everything. Good. Some of you haven't answered yet, so go ahead and hit submit on your screen so those answers can come through. Beautiful. All right. So I'm seeing that a little bit of everything and comics seem to be the big ones. I'll share that out big for you so you can see what I see on my screen. So um, a little bit of everything is kind of what you're saying is you'd like a little bit of what's going on um, in digital storytelling with trying comics, creating stories, right, doing movies and book trailers. I actually was on a webinar yesterday about podcasting and I, I had never thought of that as a, as a digital storytelling platform, but it totally is. Um, so I have to investigate that one a little bit more. So what else did I miss? On here, you have uh, one minute to type in your box and tell me what digital storytelling activity was not on the list, but you'd love to do with students. Like podcasting would be the one I would write now because I hadn't thought of it. I'll give you a few minutes to answer that question. Story map, stop motion. Yes, you know, stop motion is one of those things that uh, I've done with students and they love it. Um, but I, I don't have it on the list. Role playing games, fabulous. We're going to talk a little bit about those today. These are great. Somebody doesn't know, they don't have any other ideas. That's great. Why? That's why we're here, right? Game based learning. Yes, I was a big gamer when I was in the classroom. So, I, and actually, I, I should mention that while I'm the assistant coordinator now, I was a sixth grade ELA teacher for many years, English language arts teacher. Um, we did a ton with storytelling um, and we went one-to-one -one with iPads. Um, gosh, it has to be seven years ago now. Um, it was right when they had first come out and it, it really just changed everything in my classroom on how I, I taught what we did. And really it just opened up a world of creation. Um, it wasn't about consuming the technology, it was about creating with it. And um, you know, these are, um, it just changed the way I did everything. Puppets, that's a great one too. And game-based learning was definitely a big one for me. Animated video, fabulous answers. I love it, great. All right, so what is augmented reality? I'm going to ask you one question on the next slide. It's a game, so um, we'll see who gets that answer right the fastest. So um, it's called Time to Climb if you don't know Nearpod, but we're gonna do one quick question. Pick a character real quick and hit start on your screen. And I will show your names for this so we can see who gets the answer correct the fastest. All right, got most of you connected. I'll give you another second or two to get on there. Again, if you just joined us or you joined late, go ahead and go to join.nearpod.com, put in the code you see in the top left-hand corner of your screen and you can join. All right, looks like 13 is gonna be the, the lucky number today. Here is your one question. You'll see it on your screen and tap your answer. The faster you tap it and the more correct your answer is, the more points you get. All right. So I don't know how to say your name. Is it Stiliano? So I hope I got it right. Great job. You, you answered correctly. So augmented reality is really um, where you're taking something where you can still see your world around you, but you're embedding this other layer on top of it. And 3D Bear does that really well and um, keeps it very engaging for students. So we are gonna go into um, 3D Bear and how to use it once we talk a little bit about social emotional learning, because that's our third big topic today. Um, but let me show you some examples of 3D Bear first. So this is a great slide deck, Mitch, I think you did this one. Um, but this is a great one to kind of show what 3D Bear does and how augmented reality works. So you are given a topic of whatever kind and you're going to build your scene in 3D Bear and it can be an image, it could be a video, you can add your own voice to it. Um, so you can create your own stories, which we'll play with a little bit today. Um, you can have a problem that you need to solve through design thinking. You could redesign something. So one of the examples I'm going to show later is one that's actually on the uh, 3D Bear website for um, creating your home learning environment. Uh, a great science one, which one is real? So the students uh, could play a game where they're trying to figure out uh, which are the augmented reality ones that have been put into the scene, which ones are the real ones. And we just did that. Did you just do that one? No, you just did it. That oh, I did question, right? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were saying you did another one. That's awesome. 
Yep. Um, social emotional learning, which we'll talk about today. Um, and we're going to talk about these little box guys because they're amazing for for um, helping students with emotions. You can recreate a scene, um, and we'll definitely show some examples of that today. You can create a colony on a planet um, where they're actually creating, you know, a spot wherever they are. I love this one with the dinosaur park. With the, I mean, this is a beautiful picture anyway, um, but just adding that whole other layer. So you can see that augmented reality takes this image and then layers on top of it. And what I love about 3D Bear, and I love a lot about 3D Bear, but one of the cool things is it does create the shadows for you, um, which I think is so important because it seems more real in your environment when you have that. Uh, recreating historical scenes or recreating an event, or anything like that. So right now students could be creating their events in 3D Bear about their life right now. I mean, they're living history right now, right? Um, creating a scene from a book or a story or something else where, and I'm gonna show a couple examples of that um, as we go through. Uh, science and nutrition, where you're talking about different meals, you know, make your perfect ice cream cone or um, something along those lines. And you'll see in here, it mentions Thingiverse and SketchUp. Those are built right into the 3D Bear platform, which is fabulous. And then one of my favorite activities to do is uh, vocabulary, where the students can um, create words and because the whole alphabet is there. And you can do, you can highlight colors doing syllables or parts of speech or um, just, you know, which are the vowels, which are the uh, consonants, whatever you want to do, and, and uh, you can create some pretty fun things. So those are just some ways to kind of use 3D Bear. But let's talk first about social emotional learning, because that's the big, the big topic of our big three, right? We've got 3D Bear, we've got um, digital storytelling, but we're, we're taking it from the lens of social emotional learning. So Castle um, is a website, which I actually have linked on the next slide for you. Um, or a couple slides down, but um, they talk about these five core competencies, um, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, responsible decision-making, and self-awareness. And what I'm going to be doing with you is I'm gonna take you through 3D Bear, through each of these categories, so you can kind of break it down and talk about what they are. You can see on the screen that when we're talking about management, we're talking about our emotions and the way we handle stress. Social awareness is talking about are we empathetic? Do we understand how people could feel in this situation? Are we being kind um, with relationship skills? How are we um, dealing with conflict with others and dealing with things um, that are maybe outside of our control and looking for help? With the responsible decision-making, we're talking about making those right social and ethical um, considerations in different um, situations. And then self-awareness is knowing how we feel and how we can um, you know, help ourselves if we're uncomfortable in a situation. So we're gonna break those down a little bit with today. But what I wanted to know from you, on your screen you have a picture. Um, circle one or two or more uh, ones that you're most concerned about for your students while they're home. So on your screen, you're going to see a pen tool on the very bottom of your screen. And um, with your finger, if you're on an iPad or use your mouse, I know it's not as easy, just put a circle around some of yours. Um, great, some of you figured it out. I see that you're in progress here. I'll hide your names again. Yeah, so some have said responsible decision making is a big one. Responsible decision making, good. I'm seeing that one a lot as we're going through. Yep, self management, absolutely. I have two teenagers at home, and um, self management is kind of a big deal right now as far as staying on top of what they're doing um, for their schoolwork. Um, you know, I have a, a sophomore and a senior, so um, they're really at different levels as far as what's expected and um, the level of work. I can tell you my sophomore has a ton more work than my senior seems to, um, which I would have said the opposite when they were in school. So um, it's interesting to see how that has changed and then their schedules. My son wakes up, gets on his computer, does all his work for the day, then shuts down and then he enjoys the rest of his day. My daughter spends the entire day doing anything other than schoolwork and then does all her work in the evenings. It's really depends on their days and how they schedule their time. Um, and, and I figure that if, that if the kids know how to get their parents angry at them, they probably have pretty good relationship skills. Mm -hmm. That is very true. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> yep. Couple self-awareness. Yeah, we're, we're all across the spectrum, which is great because you know what? We're going to talk about all of them today. Um, but I do see um, a trend where we're getting a lot of that self-management. I think that's the big one in my household is making sure that they're managing their time. And then at, I've added chores because they're home. They can do more chores, making sure they get their chores done as well. Good. Yes. I love it. 
All right, so I'm gonna move on from this. So if you wanna submit it, you can, that way it saves for you. Um, so I'll give you a moment to hit the submit button at the bottom of your screen if you haven't already. I see most of you have. Great, all right, and I'm gonna move on from these. There they go, see you all did it. Yep, I'm seeing a lot of the self-management, which is great. So I just wanted to point out a few um, statistics too. Uh, research from Castle shows that investment in social emotional learning has led to a 13% gain in academics, classroom behavior and stress management. So we know that it's important to have a focus on social emotional learning. Google actually put out a report um, this past summer um, about technology and education. And they said the number one um, way to increase, um, you know, good behavior and, and increased academic engagement was greeting students at the door. And obviously that's not something we can do in this home learning environment, but what can we do? How can we greet our students so they have that same impact um, while we're home? And that's, that's kind of where we're leading to some of these ideas and these activities. So while you're assigning your math and your social studies and all that, having those, those emotional check-ins to make sure that our kids are okay in those activities so they can kind of focus on their behavior or their, the way they're feeling is really going to be helpful. Um, for example, I mentioned my kids, uh, my daughter's uh, English teacher, once a week, they have um, just a check-in. It's just a meet to kind of hang out and just see um, each other's faces. There's no academics tied to that, that hour that they spend once a week. It's just an emotional check-in. And I think it's fabulous. I know that it's helping um, the kids out, it's, it's voluntary. So if they're not, just not into that, it's okay. But a good portion of them do sign in, even though they're seniors in high school, because they want to have that connection with, uh, with their teacher. And, you know, and she's created that, that um, relationship already that they want to see her and they want to see each other. So I and, if, and if you think about it, you know, if these kids are home and they're, and they're mm -hmm. wondering, you know, what's school going to be like when I come back? Am I going to actually progress to the next year? Um, am I going to survive without my friends? You know, pretty soon, if they, if those are the things that they're really thinking about, how much, how much effort can they put into academics and learning? And so part of what we have to do is we have to figure out how to get them to um, accept some of those things that are happening that could be stressful so that they can better cope with the things that start moving them forward. Yeah, definitely. Um, and for any parents or um, educators, if you want more information about CASEL, um, I put the link in here for you. Um, it has some great resources right now for COVID-19 for both parents and for you. Um, so it's just a great website with a lot of, uh, you know, statistics and information for you. Um, and then just one more thing as far as uh, talking about why it matters, and you're all here because you know it matters. So, um, you know, uh, the, like the old saying says, you know, I'm preaching to the choir right now. You all you all get it because you're here. But I thought but, we but you're it. also giving us ammunition that we can use with the other people we work with who may not get it. True. Very true. Um, so there is a percentage gain, a significant percentage gain in their social behavior, in their attitudes. They're, um, you know, reducing their problem behaviors, reducing their emotional stress, um, and obviously an increase in their scores and in their ability to, to handle situations. Um, and some of these activities that we're going to show are really going to pull into all of these. So hopefully it will help um, your students, you know, feel a little bit less stressed maybe a little less anxious, and then maybe a little bit more engaged, or hopefully a lot more engaged <laughs> while they're home. Can I just jump in for a sure. quick sec? This is, this is Shelby. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I haven't seen uh, the data, the studies, and I, I would love to know if anybody has, but I know that I have learned that uh, in longitudinal studies, long-term, uh, you know, following people up into their 20s, that uh, having had strong social emotional learning experiences uh, in, in early grades uh, has made them much more successful as people in terms of, of you know, career. Um, I mean, any, any, any way you want to look at it, you know, stable family life, jobs, uh, whatever. Uh, and I think that's, that's you know, we, we concentrate so much on this, like, hey, if you teach SEL, then it's going to get kids' grades better. Well, like, yeah, that's great. Um, it's going to make them better people. And I, I'd love to know if anybody has uh, data that we can we can cite for that kind of stuff. Yeah, I would definitely check that CASEL website because it does break it down for each of those categories, the statistics based on each of those. And they did the study, I think 2017 is the last time they did the study. 
Um, but if you go back through, they have, um, you know, they have information as far as how it breaks down for those. And then Google for Education did a study on social emotional learning too with the impact of technology. And there's some great statistics there. And yes, they do talk about academic achievement, but they also talk about, um, you know, better behavior and better um, coping skills. So definitely ones to check out on uh, that topic. That's great. So, um, and while we're talking about it, oh, perfect. You're all getting your answers in. Um, I did put a screen up that says, share your favorite resources. So maybe there's a resource about social emotional learning that I'm not aware of um, that you wanna share out. Um, and I love this one. Um, coding is, is another one of my favorite um, topics to talk about. I'm actually doing a webinar this, this evening on coding. So perfect that you're talking about retelling stories with coding. Um, working with others to, um, helps their their social emotional learning. Um, yeah, builds empathy. It's a big one. And I mean, think about when your kids were little. If you had kids, or even if you work with young kids, you might often say to them, "How do you think that made somebody feel?" And sometimes just taking it from somebody else's perspective um, can really help build those skills. So great resource or great ideas um, to help them talk about it. And coding is just as engaging as augmented reality. So, um, you know, I think both of those are great outlets for, um, for your students. Wisdomthinkers.org. That is a new one for me. I'm excited to learn. I, I can't wait to see that one. Um, so that's, he's actually in Syracuse. That's in Syracuse. Oh, okay. So not, not that far. Um, but Very cool. uh, anyhow, I'll let you move on. <laughs> oh, and I, I, actually, I, also, I, yeah. I also wanted to thank Shelby for a great question. So, uh, yeah, if you have questions, please either on the chat or unmute yourself and ask the question, because one of the purposes is, is to is to make sure that we hit your needs and also bring in your expertise. Yeah. So, Shelby, thank you. That was beautiful. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. Reflective stories, social stories. Yep. Oh, that's a new one for me too. Second Life of Machinima Video Production. I'll have to look at that. <laughs> Tabletop role playing games. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And then the Game Academy. Thank you. These are great resources for me. Um, you know, and for all of us to be able to take a look at it. Augmented reality really helps. Class Dojo has, oh, those growth mindset videos in Class Dojo are, are phenomenal for kids. They really bring it down to a great level. Um, another great one, um, another resource that I've used for social emotional learning um, is Classcraft. If you haven't used that, it's, it takes that whole gamified, um, you know, they, they look like, you know, warfare kind of characters, but they have different emotions and you can take them through different events with it. So it's another great one for the older. Class Dojo, I always think more for the youngers because you have the little monsters. Classcraft for the older ones is great. So these are great. All right, I'm going to move on. So if you haven't hit post, go ahead and do so. All right. So let's talk about the lessons that use 3D Bear and digital storytelling for social emotional learning. Now we've, we've defined all three. So let's have a little fun and, and look at some ideas. So um, and I broke it down by the five different categories. So um, this the first category we're going to look at is self-awareness. Um, and that's the ability to accurately recognize one's emotions. We're talking about confidence, we're talking about optimism, their strengths and limitations. You know, just being able to say, you know, I'm good at something, um, you know, maybe helps them realize who they are and what what their strengths are. And I think in education, we often, often focus on the data of the things that kids have, their weaknesses, what they need to be working on. But if you focus on your strengths, and it's a great book if you've never read it called Focus on, Now Focus on Your Strengths, where it actually has a, a strengths test to see what you're good at. Um, like mine always came up with creativity. I love to be creative, but I'm not artistic whatsoever. Um, you know, I, I was the one in um, in elementary school that I would show my art to my teacher, my art teacher, and she would rip it in half and tell me it wasn't art, and I had to go back and try again. So, um, but I'm but I'm a creative person, and there's ways to be creative beyond the ability to draw. Um, and so I think that's part of my self awareness is I'm okay at you know writing drawing a straight line, but what can I do with it? Um, and I have some examples I'm gonna show you with that. So 3D Bear has these awesome uh, digital storytelling cards. Mitch, I'm sure you're not surprised that this is my first yeah. time to get into That's it. That's cool. I'll actually, I'm gonna find them and I'm gonna post a link in the chat so people can download them. Cause you can Perfect. use them. You don't have to use them with 3D Bear. You could use them in, you know, in anything. Right. So um, the cards are broken into five different categories, challenge, place, character, curveball, and preference. And you can rearrange how you want them to be. Um, and then you can shuffle through and grab different cards. So I just uh, laid them out and I built, I wanted to build my story 
um, based on what it says. So the child just built something your teacher would do. The place happened to be a garden. The character was a girl. It has to include a bicycle. And the emotion, what we're talking about is that they're calm. So I built this scene. So I have a girl sitting on a bicycle and um, there, there, there's another, the teacher is there and we have the garden. I put this giant sun in the background to kind of make it fun. Um, and then I could add my own voice to tell the story of what's happening. Maybe the little girl, she's calm and excited because she just learned to um, ride her bike and now she's going to teach it to her teacher or however I wanna take it. Um, you know, I can take it in that direction. So it's easy to create these little scenes and then you can add your own voice to it. Um, I'm gonna share a little video with you um, or just a short clip of it. I'm not gonna show the whole one. This is a, a book by, um, Oh, uh, her last name is Krauss, um, I think. I, I might be wrong, but it's called The Okay Book. I'll play a little part for you. It'll show her name on the bottom, I think. Yeah, Krauss Hi. Rosenthal. How are you? I'm okay. I like to try a lot of different things. I'm not great at all of them, but I enjoy them just the same. I'm an okay sleeper. I'm an okay climber. So you get the idea that they go through, and this is just a book trailer for the book, um, but it goes through all the things they're okay at. And then um, and then the, it ends this way. I don't know what it is yet, but I sure am having fun figuring it out. So I love this book because um, it's simple and it talks about, um, you know, that you're, you, it's okay to be okay at things because you're still figuring it out. You're still trying things out. And so um, I decided to take that to another, uh, to an activity. So I just gave the students this prompt. What are you okay at? What do you do well? And then you're going to create your scene to see um, how that works. And um, because I don't directly teach students anymore, I do a lot of professional learning. I tend to make a slide with the prompt and then the teachers can then use it. So here, use this prompt if you'd like, however you want to use it. Um, so here's my example. In the summer, we go to the beach. I'm okay at riding my bike to the beach, but I know I can get better. So your students can make a quick little scene and say something that they're okay at. I, for some reason, I was on bicycles. So, <laughs> so I have that one on there uh, to talk about that. Um, and then you, they can create the scenes to, to talk about what they're okay at. And you can continue to create more scenes and then um, you know, stitch them together to create these great stories. Another great one, and I mentioned, because I saw somebody from Fable Vision was on, is The Dot. I don't know if you've ever read The Dot. It's by Peter Reynolds. He's amazing. Um, all of his books have uh, this positive, um, you know, emotional um, kind of feel to them. Um, and they have, I mean, he has the one called VU, but I want to talk about The Dot. Um, and every day, every year in September, they have Dot Day, and there's all sorts of activities tied to it. But I thought this would be a fun one to kind of show you how you can create within 3D Bear to create your own dot. So in the story, um, the student doesn't think she's good at art, kind of like I said I was not. So she just puts a dot on a piece of paper and then the teacher, you know, hangs it on the wall and she realizes, hey, you know, I can be creative. And, and there's a lot more to it. But just to give you a very basic overview of the story. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, grab my phone and I'm going to put my phone on the screen. And Mitch, you tell me if it doesn't show up in just a moment. Hang on. All right, do you see my cell phone on the screen? It's there, it's right there. Perfect, so I am in 3D Bear. Let me come out of it for a second. So 3D Bear looks like this little guy right up here. I'm gonna click on him and I'm gonna go into the platform. And I wanna show you how quick and easy this is to do. So if my prompt is the dot and, I, and I'm going to create my own dot, my own art, I'm going to click on the button in the center and I'm sorry that I have, uh, to be able to reflect, I have a, a trial one, but in the center on the bottom, I'm gonna click that circle and it's gonna open up. So you're gonna see my gorgeous yellow desk that I have here. <laughs> my daughter's old art desk that, <laughs> that I've repurposed to be my desk for, for, uh, for all my webinars um, since we've been doing home learning. But I'm going to click on the bottom of my screen, the little um, shapes. And when I do, I'm going to get choices. So I'm gonna be moving over on this platform to grab a dot. So I'm gonna grab a sphere. And I'm just going to hit the check to place it. As I move it up and down, it gets smaller and bigger. 
or I can shift it up and down using the up and down arrows at the top. All right, so I'm just gonna keep it to a regular size. And then in the bottom center of my screen is a texture button. And I can click on that, and what it does is it brings up other things that are on my camera roll. So maybe I wanna grab this little girl. Um, and I can zoom in on her if I want, or I can say, no, I just want all of her. Um, and I'm gonna hit the check. And what it's going to do is actually put her image right on my dot for me. I can change the color of my dot, so maybe I want it to be all blue. However I want it to be, and I can move this dot around with her on it. Or I could say, you know what, I don't want a dot on, you know, I don't want, you know, her, I just want a texture on it. I could do as I please on my dot. I can also change from the color, I can change the, the way it kind of looks, so I can make it a little shinier or, or a little bit more opaque, however I want it to, to be in there. So I very quickly, I can create my own dot, from the center button, I can hit the record button and it's going to record my dot and I can describe it and talk about it and why I love this dot and what it means to me to, to design art or whatever it happens to be. I can tell my story and then it saves immediately right into my camera roll and all of the ones that I've done before are there. So I've done this one before. Here's my, my dot that I did earlier. Um, and you can see like when I was talking about the, the scene, I was trying it a couple times as I was going through, like I realized there was a lot of empty sky, that's why I added the sun, but I saved all of the different scenes and then I can stick them together to create what I want. All right, so there's a real quick activity you can do where I'm using the, um, I'm using the app. All right, let me show you some more ideas. So another idea that you can do is an all about me, when we're talking about that self-management and that self-awareness, um, you know, they can create their own scenes to talk about themselves. So here, we have some music playing. I put in all of my favorite things because I like music. I like playing games. I love elephants. I love my family. You know, whatever it happens to be, I can create this, create a little all about me scene that talks about the things that I love. Another one when we're talking about self-awareness is our emotions and how we deal with them. So here's the prompt again. Your task is to show how many emotions you've had throughout the day. So you create a scene in 3D Bear that shows five different emotions you've experienced throughout the day. And they might have been happy when they woke up and sad when they had to do a worksheet or mad when they realized they were out of um, yogurt in the fridge. Whatever it happens to be, they can talk about their emotions of what happened throughout the day as they're going through. And then they can share that back to their teacher. Um, another example is you can uh, showcase different types of emotions for your um, for your students, and then the students can create their own, um, you know, emotion vocabulary cards for themselves, where each card has a different emotion um, that they're feeling throughout the day. So it's a, just a different way to show those emotions. So the next area was self-management. So here we're just look, looking at our goals, right? So the ability to regulate your emotion, thoughts, and behaviors in a variety of situations. So we're talking about our stress management, our impulse control, our motivation, um, our goals. All right, so here I'm going to have you do a very quick activity just to kind of keep you moving and shaking a little bit. On your screen, match the image with a word and think about how you could do this with students. So maybe you can have a word and an image that you've created in 3D Bear and the students can combine them to talk about ways that they can de-stress. Mitch, while they're doing that, did any questions come in that we can address? Uh, well, a couple people asked, um, uh, uh, I guess, how expensive 3D Bear was. Mm -hmm. um, and then somebody asked about where the submit button was, but that was a minor question. And I think uh, pretty much everybody is enjoying what you're saying. Okay. Wonderful. Good. I have lots of ideas. Yeah, you know, you're only limited by your imagination, right? Right. <laughs> awesome. Good. I see you're getting those those answers right there as they're coming in. I'll give you another minute. And at any point, if there if a question comes in, we can hop back onto the platform and show it some more there because I did a very quick overview just with one activity. All right, we've got a couple people that have finished. Good job connecting your ways to de-stress with an image. Another activity you can do with students is have them create images and then try to match it with um, their emotion. 
Another activity you can do with students is one about, uh, again, about feelings where they can start to think about different feelings and different emotions and what their face would look like with each one. So tests make me feel a certain way. Uh, reading makes me feel a certain way. Worksheets make me feel a certain way. Friends make me feel a certain way. Uh, home learning makes me feel a certain way. And then you can have the students say, you know what, I feel happy when, and they can create that scene in 3D Bear about what makes them happy and they can add a new slide to show that scene. So maybe they're happy when they get to play video games or they get to go for a walk or um, they're happy when they're in their backyard or playing with their dog, whatever it happens to be, they can create those scenes right in 3D Bear. Um, one of the things that I was reading on the CASEL website is that um, having students identify things that make them worry and make them stressed out sometimes will help them learn how to diffuse that, that, um, that worry. So um, here's a, an image that they can use and, and they can do this with their own room in their house um, where they take a picture of it and then they add in things that, that worry them. So maybe it's you know not seeing my friends or um, Maybe they're worried because mom and dad are, are arguing or whatever it happens to be and they can display all those and show all that in their worry room and then they can talk about how they can help with each of those things or we can help them with understanding different ways that we can help them, um, you know, kind of diffuse some of those worries. And sometimes just identifying it can help uh, de-stress them a little bit. This is one of my favorite ones. So um, this is in that self-management category where the, uh, the students are going to think about how they handle the situation. So maybe um, they were, um, you know, having breakfast and their brother made them mad over something, right? And um, so what they can do is they're gonna tell their story of what actually happened. So they write in their story, they can write it on paper, it doesn't have to be on here, but they can write in their story and um, talk about how they handled the situation, right? And then they can decide to change one aspect of the story. What could they have done different at, cert at a certain point? So when um, their brother made them mad, how they handled it could be different. Or maybe before the brother made them mad, they could have uh, you know, said, hey, you know, before you do this, you know, if you can anticipate it, and then rewrite their story. And then they take that idea into 3D Bear and they recreate that story using that um, outline and that story that they've created and they're going to um, to add that in and say, this is what we, you know, how I handled the situation differently. And then I think a really important part when you're talking about social emotional learning and any learning really is reflection. What did they learn? How did they learn a really good tool on how to, um, you know, handle certain situations? You're giving them a frame of context on how they uh, can handle that, that emotion. Um, and maybe that will help them if they're ever in that situation again, to be able to handle it a little bit differently. Um, it's, reflection to me is the most important part of, of the education um, experience or that learning experience. Um, but I think sometimes we, we overlook it. So um, I think reflection is great, a great way for students to kind of learn and grow. So what other ideas do you have with self-management and um, self-assessment? So go ahead and share your ideas in here before we move on. Maybe there's an activity that you guys use. Yep, collaborate to create a movie or video. Yeah, you can certainly do that. That's a great one where students can work together to kind of understand how something works. I like that. No more ideas? All right, I will continue to move on. All right, so the next sec section is social awareness. So when we're talking about social awareness, it's it's kind of like we were talking about with the whole brother thing, like how to handle um, you know, different behaviors and how you respond to different situations. So if a student is sitting in the, or standing somewhere and there's a desk and you know, knowing their personal space where they're supposed to be uh, from the teacher or maybe in the classroom or, or rather at home, you know, where they should be when their parents are on a call or what they should be doing in certain situations. Sometimes helping them understand how they should react and what they should do will help them be more comfortable um, dealing with situations as they arise. So it's kind of like you're, you're kind of setting them up to understand how they should act in certain places. And, I, and I'll say just with the social awareness, this works really, really well with um, kids on the autism spectrum, spectrum because very often they don't want to verbally describe feelings, but if they, but they can do it when they're creating stories around 
um, what could have happened or what might have happened, and they those stories then they they identify with the stories afterwards, and can and it can have a huge effect on changing behavior. Definitely, yeah. So um, Mitch put out on Friday a fun Friday challenge called um, create a photo or video using 3D Bear showing social emotional intelligence. Nice tie into today. Thank you, Mitch. Um, so I was thinking about it and I actually haven't posted mine on Twitter yet. Um, I have ideas and I have one I'm going to share in the next screen. Um, but it's such a great idea, you know, to think about, you know, what what showcases you feeling a certain way depending on a situation. So here's one I put together real quick. Let me turn the volume up so you can hear it. No, I didn't put sound on this one. I thought I did. I, I had it in my head. So here we have this global issue, right? We're, we're talking about this global issue. And this person is saying we have to stay home. And then this person is feeling a little nervous about it. That was kind of my thought. And I, I you know, I have that image in the background of, you know, what is social emotional aware awareness? You know, what are we thinking about? And um, it's making good choices. And I don't know about um, you guys, but I've been on a lot of Facebook groups and, um, you know, and, and there's ones for different communities that I live in. And there's a lot of angry people right now <laughs> that I think could use some of this kind of like, how did, would it make you feel if you posted this? Or how is it going to make somebody else feel when they, when they receive this? Because everyone has these different levels of stress. So walking them through these emotions and having these conversations, I think could help a lot of us right now with what we're dealing with. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't in, get involved on those groups because I'm the one that would be like, have you thought about both sides of how you're both feeling in this? And I'd start to mediate. But if you give them the chance to, um, to 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 say this is how I feel, then maybe you can talk about how you can address it better in a social situation. I did grab a few from um, that Friday's challenge to throw on here. So um, creating um, your home environment, you know, um, sharing um, some appreciation to people. This one little girl created a scene of her playing um, soccer in her yard. Um, and I love this one from Linda, um, where she actually did physical distancing with the with the characters, but they both look really happy. So I thought that one was great. So great examples that were out there for the challenge. And then I I put one into the chat that I had done a while ago also, which is kind of, to me one of the things that was interesting is I did two different scenes, and then I used iMovie to combine them, and so it shows kind of three different emotions. The first one. Um, is that happy, the second one is sad, and the third one is happy again. But it's basically just two different scenes stitched together into three. Yeah, and that's uh, the nice thing about 3D Bear is it creates these images in this video. So any place you normally would put images or video, you can upload them to. So you might have noticed I use Buncee a lot. Um, I use Nearpod um, a lot. Um, and I can easily take in whatever I've created on 3D Bear onto these platforms. It makes it really super easy that it saves right to your camera roll. Um, so yeah, iMovie would be great for that. You could do that in WeVideo or Screencastify, whatever you want to use, you can certainly um, app smash, we'll, talk, we'll call it that. You can certainly app smash with it. So the next idea um, is, you ever do the, you know, what would you do? I think there's even a show that's called, uh, what would you do? So you can take students through this idea through a virtual field trip. And I know some, we were talking earlier with um, somebody from Greece who mentioned he, he does virtual reality. So this should be right up your alley. Um, but you can take a photo of that virtual, virtual reality scene and then use that as the backdrop for your, um, for 3D Bear. So um, here is a virtual reality, um, scene, right? So on your screen, you can click and drag and look around it. Or if you were in virtual reality goggles, you can look at it in virtual reality. All right. So um, here we're just at like a gaming convention. And um, a lot of people around all the machines have several lines of people waiting to get on and play and that sort of thing. So for some students, this would be a very stressful situation. I know my son would be pushing his way through to be able to play the games, right? Um, so lots of situational conversations can happen when you're um, talking about um, behaviors. You can even take some of their faces and really have conversations about how um, that person might be feeling in the situation. Um, so hopefully you see smiles. So yeah, you got some people smiling over there. So you've got that kind of situation. So what I did is I took a picture of the screen and I added, um, or I while I was in 3D Bear, I held it up to the screen and I put this little boy um, looking at the scene and he's thinking about how he would feel if he was in that situation. So let me play that little video. If I were in the scene, I might feel nervous because there's a lot of people around. 
and I wouldn't be sure what I'm allowed to do. So if a student said something like that to you, and I've had students say things like this where, you know, I wasn't sure what I was supposed to do, um, or I didn't know what, you know, what I was allowed to do. Well, that's a great way to have that conversation. So, you know, it's as simple as that, where I just had my laptop up. I took, I, I went into 3D Bear and I filmed it right on my laptop um, to be able to have those conversations. And I just love putting, and you can rotate any of their characters. So it's that same little boy you saw standing in front of the desk. You can rotate them around. So they're facing different ways and it just changes the perspective, I think really well um, for this kind of thing where he's taking a look at the scene, he's exploring it, he's thinking about how it makes him feel. You could also flip it around and have him have it show it through emotions on his face too um, and maybe um, have that conversation that way. So now I'm gonna put you to the challenge. Here's your scene. All right, you've got, it looks like a family having a nice dinner. All right, there's your scene. Now tell me, what um, could you ask about in uh, about that 360 photo that students could create in 3D Bear? I'm putting you to work. Use your imagination. So type in that box at the bottom. What could you ask um, students to create using that scene? Yep, you could talk about sharing food, absolutely. What could you add to the dinner? Great one, love that. I hadn't thought of that one, that's great. Describe who's at the dinner, what they're eating. Are they celebrating something? Yeah, absolutely. What's missing? That's great. How does this dinner table differ from yours? That's great. Then you're talking about that social awareness, that cultural piece. Maybe they've never seen, um, you know, food um, in that kind of way, you know, or they they don't know what something is. And what can you do if you're in that situation and you're not sure? Um, yeah, you could have them create their own favorite meal. Yep. And how would you do it? And what would you put on it? What are the nutrients? Oh, I love it. We got some health people here. Yep, that they're consuming. Who would I invite? Yeah, absolutely. You could even talk about table manners in this one, you know, what's appropriate. Um, I remember going to, I think it was my son's second grade birthday party and um, it's, what was he, six or seven? And one little boy spent more of the time under the table than at the table. So maybe, um, you know, he needed to be preset a little bit more to what's appropriate, you know, when you're sitting at the table um, and you're eating a meal, should you be under the table crawling around, you know, pulling people's shoes off and untying shoelaces, or should you be sitting at the chair? It's a great way to um, to have those conversations. Oh, I like this one. What would you ask people to talk about at the table? So yeah, conversation starters. What would you like people to tell about your day? I love it. These are great. Who do you share meals with? Yep. Oh, a prayer. I love it. Yep. Maybe there's a, um, you know, in my family, when we have big gatherings, it's always, um, you know, what are we thankful for? And we do it whether it's Christmas or, or Thanksgiving or not. We often will go around and say things we're thankful for, especially if it's a birthday celebration, you know, so something really special about the person that's there. Um, spread some kindness. Those are great ones. You guys are all rock stars. I love it. All right. Keep moving on here. So the next section is that relationship skills. And a lot of the ideas that you already gave me really fit into this one as well. But it's the ability to maintain those healthy relationships um, by communicating, cooperating, um, acting appropriately in situations, and asking for help. That's a big one. Um, some kids really struggle with asking for help um, when they need it. Others are fabulous at it. Um, you know, you just you never know um, which way they're going to go. Let's talk about those. So. Now, I just pulled this picture uh, from 3D Bear, right? I took a picture of this person, but I want you to pretend this person is in your home. How would you spend time with them? And if we had you know, all of you on 3D Bear right now, I would have you create the scene there, but just because of the sense of time or the sake of time while we're on the webinar, um, just on your screen, um, type in a box, say, how would you spend time with them? Or you can draw something on the picture, whatever your comfort zone is within, um, within, um, you know, it's like for me, if somebody said draw a picture, I would start to sweat, I'd get nervous. But if you said hop on 3D Bear and create this, I'd be all right. Um, or if you wanted me to type in a box and use words, I'd be good with that too. So how would you spend time with this person? And these are good situational things where you can talk about this with a student. What's the right way to be? And maybe based on their facial expression, um, you know, maybe you can say, does this person look welcoming or not? Does this person, um, you know, look like somebody else 
I should approach, you know, and, and what's appropriate for when I do approach them. So I love the answers coming through. These are great. Yep. So I'm going to grab that one's still in progress. Here we got one. Yeah, dance party. I love it. Yep. Actually, that's one of the ideas I have coming up is let's create our own dance parties. Yep. What would you like to, uh, would you like to take a walk? Yeah, that's a great one. Can't say that too loud. My dog will come running. She thinks we'll take a run. Where are you from? <laughs> Tell me about your life. The fact that she hasn't barked yet is amazing. Play chess. Awesome. Yeah, that would be great. No, I grabbed yours. Yeah, let me introduce myself. That is a great entry, right? When you walk up to somebody, you say, hi, I'm so-and-so, and then the other person says something back. My big question um, after this, are we going to be shaking hands, you know, when we um, come out of this pandemic? Um, I'm thinking that we'll, we'll more stay our six feet apart and just say hello and welcome. Um, introduce yourself, ask if there's anything that you can help with. How are they doing? Great one, yeah. Um, always good to ask people how they're doing and mean it, not just how you doing and then move on, you know, give them a chance to answer. These are fabulous. I did the dance party. And Shelby in the chat has another good uh, website. And then okay. I guess Natalie's uh, screen isn't showing. But. Oh, that's unusual. But you're, you're, oh, you know what? Hit the refresh button on your browser. You might have just dropped Wi Fi for a second. So just pop back in. That's probably why. If she doesn't have a draw the picture on there. That's great. These are fabulous. Great ideas. And again, you can take this idea. All right, pretend a person just walked in your door. What are you going to do? Grab 3D Bear and um, and off you go. I mean, um, you know, it's as simple as giving them a, a prompt, which we're going to talk about too. I have some of those. Um, all right, so I gave you another draw at one. Again, if we had all the time in the world and I can send you out to 3D Bear, I'd have you do it here. Um, but right now I uh, put a bunch of those little box guys and these are great because they're in the emotions category right on uh, the 3D Bear um, app. And um, what I would have the students do is tell me an emotion you're feeling right now and they can pick one of those emotions. Here I'm go going to have you circle that emotion. Put an X over an emotion somebody else felt today. You know, um, so, you know, maybe they felt sad because, you know, there wasn't any more special K for breakfast or whatever it happened to be. And put a question mark over something you're unsure about. Maybe the students um, can't always identify facial expressions. So you can use one of these um, box kind of looking characters, these Minecraft character uh, type of things to talk about that. So I see they're coming in. You got some circles. Yeah, maybe you felt more than one emotion. So you have to circle more than one. Um, or maybe the students will create, like Mitch said, he'll do a bunch of different emotions and then create a little movie of, here are all the emotions I felt today. Yeah, and that, these are the ones I knew how to deal with and these are the ones I you know, was struggling with. These are great. Good, all right, moving on. So another fun activity you can do with your students are called gratitude snaps. If you haven't heard of gratitude snaps, um, they're pretty popular on Twitter. The idea is like Snapchat where you take a picture um, but you're doing these with spreading kindness. So a uh, gratitude, gratitude snap is taking a photo to show what you're grateful for. So here again, um, while I was making this slide, I took a picture of um, a scene I created in 3D Bear of the little girl with a heart. And then I typed in, because you can do that on the, um, on, uh, the screen, you can type in whatever you'd like. And I wrote, I'm grateful for family. So there's a quick little gratitude snap. You can have your students do these every once in a while just to say, you know, let's remember that there's things that we can be thankful for right now. And the students can create their quick little scene in there. Responsible decision making is the next category. So this is the ability to make good choices. Um, we're talking about um, realizing consequences of things that you do and the well-being of yourself and others. So, um, you know, these are the when you're talking about that that check-in, um, like I was saying, my daughter's teacher's doing this kind of this pulls in there really well. But you're talking about um, you know, I know that these check-ins are going to make me feel better and, and saying kind words is going to make me, um, them feel better. Just thinking about those sort of things. So um, one of the things that's actually um, recommended for this category is establishing routines with your students. It will help them with this category. So um, students can create their daily routines right in 3D Bear by visualizing different things. So here they're visualizing your spaces. And I mentioned this earlier, it's the one um, if I pull this right back up here for a second, let's do this. I'm gonna put my screen back up. All 
All right. You see my uh, screen on there again, Mitch? Yep. Okay. I'm going to come back into 3D Bear. And um, you're going to see right on the main screen that right at the top, it shows this lesson plan for distance and remote learning. So the students can actually click on that. And then at the bottom right of their screen, they see the little shapes. When they click on that, it's going to open up to the category with all of those types of things. So then they can they know that these are here's some chairs, tables, tablets, even a garbage can, anything they want to build their own scene so they can build their ideal uh, learning space so they can visualize it. Right. Even and a that, beanbag chair. Even the beanbag chair which, that is in there, which is great. So you've got all of these different activities that are in there to help your students build their scenes. And they can have a little fun. Maybe they want to add a dinosaur to their scene so they, you know, they can click on it and say, you know, this is one thing I wouldn't want in my scene to have this dinosaur um, in there because, you know, that's kind of fun, right? Um, that's in there. So you can do different things like that and um, create your own scene. So that one is right on the home screen for you on creating the class activity. They even break it down into different activities below here. I've also done this where the students create um, different things with math, where um, they're looking at um, like geometry. You're talking about different shapes. And I'll say to the students, I want you to create a story using different shapes and then explain why you are using those shapes. So um, and I've used it in different presentations. I had one little girl who used um, the, the half shape. So if I go into there, let me turn to you up like a little bit more of a, a blank background here. She used the shape. So if I went over here, she used the, the half sphere. And then behind it, she put a, a dancing gorilla. And she said that she made a gorilla taco. So, um, and then she had the, the gorilla dancing and that sort of thing. Um, so she was able to, um, to have a little fun with it because some of these have motion. Where did they go? Let me grab those. Here's the gorilla. So when I tap him in, you can see he's uh, dancing around there. And so she was able to, to add some, uh, some information to it. But I might be too much for it to get the sound while we're doing too many layers here. But you can do different things with, um, with establishing routines, you know, and maybe they can use the gorilla to say, these are positive routines and maybe use the dinosaur to say, these are not good routines that, to get in the habit of doing those sort of things. Let me come back over to the screen here. All right, well, we are getting near the end here. So I'm gonna share these last um, three slides really fast, or two slides really fast. Um, again, when you're establishing routines, you can talk about how to deal with different emotions as they go through the week um, as a way to establish routines. But really, any um, anything you can think of, you can do for digital storytelling in 3D Bear. I'm going to stop there um, because we are at that hour mark. Mitch, um, were there any questions that needed answering that I can help out with? Uh, well, people wanted your contact information. Oh, well, I can do that. So probably the best way to reach me is on Twitter at, at Smile Learning. And then I can actually drop my email right in the chat, too. And uh, somebody just asked if they could access this uh, in the future. And yes, I am. Uh, I am recording it. And we'll put it on the uh, EdChat Interactive Archives page. And everybody who registered, I'll send you an email to let you know when it's up. Yep. And then if you signed in if, to the notes feature in um, Nearpod, you'll get a copy of this as a PDF that's either mailed to you or put right into your um, drive or OneNote, depending on how you set it up. And I know it's challenging for people in different time zones because different parts <laughs> of the world also have different uh, I guess summer and daylight savings and real, you know, real time zones and people have different uh, dates where they change. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I appreciate all of you guys joining in. I hope uh, we all have some great lesson ideas that we share. So hop on Twitter, share them out with me as you, uh, as you use 3D Bear. Well, Lori, thank you. And I'll make sure that I get you a certificate. <laughs> yeah, I just need a little badge, you know, a little sticker. Right, I'll, I'll get the, 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 the badge and a certificate. There you go. Uh, thank it. you very much. And um, and I hope to see uh, more of you on other EdChat Interactive webinars as well. Uh, we, we've we been having, I guess we, we have about six more scheduled in April, and we're scheduling them out in May and a couple in June already. So uh, it's edchatinteractive.org. And um, everybody, please stay safe. 
and uh, have a great rest of the day. Lori, thank you again. Thank you. Absolutely. Have a great day. Okay. Bye. Bye.